Alrighty, so we're going to be uh, teaching the first snare drum lesson today to Ben Wally, one of my good friends. So, Ben, the first aspect with snare drum lessons is that you got to figure out how to set up it properly with the actual snare drum. Now, with us just using a practice pad today, it's a little different. But so what you want to do, you need to put it about waist height. So it's probably about good. You might want to raise it just a tiny bit, so I'll raise it for you. There we go. Because the way you put it at waist height, you want it so that it's a comfortable position with where your hands lay, then you can easily play without any strain. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. so yeah, so every time, no matter if you're just practicing at home, practicing on an actual snare drum, just make sure you always get the ideal height. Now when we're talking about grip, what it is, it's, it's a three finger fulcrum grip. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your thumb, well first of all, you're going to balance the stick in your first knuckle. Find the balance point. Right about there. And that's where you're going to hold the stick, actually. So you're going to put one finger there, the second finger behind it, and the thumb's going to be opposite. Want to try that? Find the balance point when you're within the first knuckle. It's a little hard at first. Go ahead, keep on. Good. There it is. Beautiful. Now, wrap those two. Okay, so and you want to get your middle finger on there as well. Now, for the other two fingers, right? They need to also be clamp. Uh, they need to be into the stick as well, but you don't want to be clamping down. So what I think about for these is that when you're playing, right, you have your two fingers here. You don't want these fingers flying out, but at the same time, you don't want them like this. So just loosely grab the rest of the stick and have it in the hand. So the where you want the rest of the stick to lay, you want it to lay right in the middle of your palm. And then when you turn it over, flip it over and just like this. Not that one to see. Flip over. There you go. So then when you do this, there it is. I'll put the other stick here. Same thing. Find the balance point. It takes a while. Once you get used to doing it a couple times, you'll know exactly the place to grip it at. Beautiful. Better. Okay. Turn it over. Okay, so when you do this, right? You want, the, you want the stick to be at about a 45 degree angle. And when they put them together, you're going to aim for the center of the practice pad and put it just like this as a triangle. That way you get a perfect, and you aim for the same spot. So when you're practicing on an actual drum pad, you can see where the hit. So that way you can track how far you're going up, how far, and making sure you're covering the right spot. Now when we're talking about a stroke, if you put, let me put our stick real quick. When you do the proper stroke, stroke you want it to go straight up, straight down in the same direction. You don't want to come down swooping like that. You don't want to just go on an angle straight up and straight down, straight up and straight down. Can you do a couple of those for me? Oh, good. So the, the proper stick <clears throat> posture is basically you want it all coming from the wrist. When you get to the larger stickings, it can be a little bit of the elbow and the shoulder, but the, the major body part that you want moving is your wrist. So keep doing it a couple more times. Now remember, when you're gripping this, right, you want your hand to be turned over so you can put a dime or a penny right on it. There it is. Now fix your grip a little bit. There we go. Better. Better. That's better. Does that feel weird? A little bit. I can tell. Just loosen up a little bit. See how, like, mine's just a little bit looser? It's not like you're kind of clamping down. There it is. Better. Put the other hand. Do, do a little bit with your right hand. Same aspect. Remember, remember, with that 45 degree angle, you don't want to be like this, right? That's about right. There you go. Do a little right hand. Better. Now, do you see? Okay, go ahead and stop. my left hand. Right. It's also my dominant hand. Exactly. And that's the problem with me is that my, I'm, my, I'm right hand dominant, so I can play so so easily with my right hand. But when you work, work on your other hand, you got to make sure that it's actually really good because you're using a lot of your fingers, but watch the rest of your movement. So the way I imagine it, sometimes when I'm practicing my actual stick, I literally grab my elbow and hold it there as and to make sure there's no movement from anything else other than my wrist, including my arm. So here, go okay. ahead. See how that feels different? But not remember, you got to make sure you have the correct grip all the time, right? Right. But you want to get the thumb to flip over there. These two up here. There we go. Flip it over. Flat. There. 
Yeah, it's better. All right, does that make any sense? Okay, so with the stroke types, there are four different actual stroke types. So what you got, they're called down, up, tap, and full. So we're gonna talk about the, the, the first two that are easiest. See this The tap and the full are when you start in the same direction and you end in the same direction. So a tap is a low to a low, just like that. A full is when you start high, end high. Up and down are similar, but you're starting in one direction and you're going in the other direction. So for an upstroke, you're starting down and you go up. For a downstroke, you're starting up and you go down. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the, the different types of strokes are depending on what you're doing in the rhythm. So if you're playing a lot of soft quiet things, you might be doing a little bit more of a tap stroke. But the normal stroke you're going to use is a downstroke. Um, so going on to so that's basically the, the regular kind of stroke types. I'm going to teach you a little bit of a mouth, multiple bounce stroke. So when you do multiple bounces, the, the key is all in the rebound. So when you, hit this, when you hit the pad, usually you just grip it, right? And you stop right as it hits. But what you want it to do is you want it to let as many bounces that the stick can create on the practice pad and just let it rebound by itself. See how you do that? Now the key for this is that you have to, and like we talked about before, when you have the other two fingers on the stick, you've got to let it be able to have enough room in this end of the end of the stick to let the stick bounce in your hand. Because if you if you grip it so tightly, you it's so hard to do the rebound. See how like I really can't get it to go. The second that I loosen up my grip, it loosens up. And the same thing with this. Hand. Does it make sense? You want to give it a little try? Let's do it with one hand. Whatever hand you want to do with, whatever hand's easiest. So go ahead and once you get your grip started, just let the stick hit the pad and let it just rebound back in your hand and bounce as many times as possible. So the big thing, right? And because you're trying to loosen the grip, you want to have the, the most part, the most important part of the grip is these three fingers. The last two is where you loosen it. So it's all in these fingers right here. Just let it bounce. Try to get it. Better. Let it bounce, though. Make sure you keep the thumb on the stick. Go ahead, try it. Just let it bounce. Just loosen up your hand a little bit. Show me again. So when you're doing this, right, you got this. See how I have my fingers on the stick, but I'm letting it rebound off. What you're doing is basically you're hitting it and you're like, you're kind of trying to force it. Just let it happen. But that's that's good. Keep going. Same thing. There we go. There we go. Keep going. Better. See? So you got a couple of them, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the big thing with multiple bounce strokes, as you can tell, is that I want to try to do it and I haven't done it for a while. Um, and the the big item for multiple bounce strokes is of course a roll, right? So when you do a multiple bounce stroke, sometimes it, you know you can just do and it's a hit or or something like that. Or basically, when you have to do a roll, you got to do it together. So which is really hard because I still struggle with it. And that's basically how an actual snare drum creates the rolling that they do, in, you know, like Star Spangled Banner, <coughs> yeah. those kinds of songs. But it all starts from the basic multiple down stroke, letting it rebound in your hand, and then as it gets quick, as you get more familiar with it, getting quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker to where you can never hear the difference in the hand. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'll try a little more multiple, multiple down Try it right now. So, remember exactly what I taught you though with the stroke type, right? Down, 
been on the same position. It's like from my point of view, if you look at how you're hitting the pad right now, it's like you start here and you're coming down on an angle and it's like really weird. So watch exactly that's better, hundred percent better. Straight up and down. There you go. Remember, what's the most important part of the grip? Those three fingers, right? Mm -hmm. as, you said, as long as you keep your thumb on it, not too hard, but you've got to keep it there. There we go. Make sense? Yeah. Better. See how much it's improved, though? Sign me up. <laughs> but that's, that's the key thing, is that it's going to take time, and a multiple bounce stroke is something that doesn't get learned on the first day. You know, and it's the, the most struggling part with snare drum is that some things you can learn really easily, but then some things you can't. So what I want to do now, I want you to play, and I'm going to play, you know, excuse me, sit. I'm going to play a quick pattern, and I want you to replicate it back to me. It's going to be really simple. So, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. So the main thing with sticking is that when you look at pieces of music, and this will get farther down the road, um, in the beginning music, they will actually put R's and L's above every single rhythm. So that's where it's most important to alternate stickings. Sometimes, depending on the pattern, they'll make you hit twice in the same hand, but it always just depends. So play that pattern for me. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Good, keep going. Just keep playing. And observe a little bit. Okay, so the biggest thing, go ahead and stop. The biggest thing for me that I'm seeing on the outside, before we even get down to the nitty-gritty detail, is just you've got to work on your grip a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and there are multiple when you go home and practice and you, and you say, you know, what did he say about the grip? I forget. There are multiple resources that you can go out there and say, you know, go to YouTube and be like, uh, snare drum grip, how to help, you know, different ways. And there might be a different way that explains it in the same pattern. So if you really focus on your grip a little bit better, it's going to hone in a lot. In the same way, when you do your, you need your sticking, right? Straight up and straight down. Aim for that same spot. Like, aim right for, um, See that little nick right there? Mm -hmm. Aim for that. Go ahead, try it again. Keep that pinky on. Try it again. Better keep going. So good. That's better. One more time. in on where you're going to stick it, right? Straight up and straight down. Better. So, just go ahead and stop. The biggest thing that I'm seeing now is that you're really focusing on where to take the stick to, right? Mm -hmm. The problem you're having now is that when you come off of the pad, how does that move? And you need to move it in the same direction. So, this is actually going to be the end of the lesson today. What I want you to work on for next week is that I want you absolutely to keep focusing on your grip. Even if you sit around the house and you're playing video games or something and eating dinner, sit there with a stick in your hand. Look at your grip. The more you get more familiarized with the grip and it feels more comfortable, it's going to be so much better for you. Other things, um, keep working on the multiple bounce. If you can start getting more rebound and letting it happen, then you will be 100% better. Let it just rebound off the pad, let it do its magic. And then the third thing I want you to work on, in the book, like we talked about earlier before the lesson, I want you to go through pages five through six. Just, there's a couple exercises on it. Just start reading through them, making sure you can see what the rhythms are and the stickings, and then you'll be 100% better. All right? Sweet. All right, so see, see you next week.